Welcome, and thanks for stopping by. Whether you're new to the channel or have been here before, if you enjoyed this video, please consider hitting that like and subscribe button. Today we're going to take a look at the Zelos Swordfish 40. This is the latest offering from Zelos, and for anyone who is not familiar with the brand or the Swordfish lineup, this is not a new model uh, for the brand. However, this is a, uh, a new size for an existing model. But there, there's more, as we'll see in this video, that has changed than just the overall size. Let's get it uh, out of the way right, out, right off the bat. This, uh, this model has completely sold out on the Zealous website. It was a smash success. It sold the entire lineup. There was uh, several colorways that were available. They sold out right off the bat. The reason why I wanted to address that up front is one, so you don't go to the website and see disappointment, but also to let you know, you'll still wanna stay tuned for these details because not only will there likely be some that show up on the secondary market and at dealers, but additionally, we know that there are more that are on the way. So specifically, uh, there are some limited edition versions, which will be uh, yet to be unveiled colorways. Those will be in stainless steel. And then later on this year, there's also going to be some bronze versions. Those two have not yet been announced as far as the colorways, but we do know that they're on the way. And exciting news for those, those will actually be the first one for Zelos to feature an optional uh, all bronze bracelet. So you can actually have a bronze case and ordinarily those just come with a rubber strap. Now you'll actually have the option of purchasing a uh, bronze bracelet to go along with it. So without further ado, let's go ahead and just dive right into the specs for this one. The main focus I wanna take for this video isn't so much on a review or on an unboxing. You can find those available. And additionally, we've already done a review on the uh, overall swordfish. So I'll put a link to that at the end of the video if you wanna check out more information on the overall model. So this one, once we get uh, through, uh, through all the specs, the main thing I wanted to focus on is looking at what's changed from the Swordfish version two, and that's the 42 uh, millimeter version, over to this latest Swordfish 40. So looking at, uh, at this watch, obviously the first thing that's going to be uh, readily apparent from, uh, from the name is that unlike the prior one, which was a 42 millimeter case, this one is now a 40 millimeter case. Along with that, the, uh, lug has, uh, the lugs have shrunk down to uh, 20 millimeters, down from 22 millimeters. The lug to lug has also shrunk down. That's from 48 millimeters, and that's not including these male end links, down to 46 millimeters on this uh, SF40. The thickness is also reduced. It's down including the crystal, and it is a flat sapphire crystal with an inner AR coating. That has shrunk down from about 13 and a half millimeters down to roughly uh, 12 millimeters. And it is very obvious, as, as we'll see when we look at these two side by side. The movement is still the same uh, and it's an NH35, but we'll look at further on the prior versions, uh, they did not include a date window on NH35. You could only get that on any of them that had the ETA movement and that would have been the version ones or the bronze which were available with the uh, ETA. It was not available in the stainless steel. So you previously could not get a date window, but we'll dive into that a little bit further. The overall uh, coloration is relatively similar uh, as far as the loom pattern in that you still have a full loomed bezel is going to be C3 on the bezel. On the this particular colorway, on the chapter ring, you're going to have BGW9, and on the hands and all of the markers, you'll have C3 there as well. And then on the second hand, you'll have uh, BGW9 uh, for that. So it's nice, uh, nice contract, uh, nice contrast. And as we'll see later on in the video, it, uh, it has the typical Zellos pop, uh, pop, unique signature color pattern. With this one, and we'll talk about this further as well, this does have a change where you have a traditional pip uh, at the top instead of uh, the full filled in as you previously had. If you can see that microscopic text there, and that is one thing that is uh, is noticeable, is the dial text is also shrunken down for this model. This uh, dropped down from a 300 meter water resistance down to a 200 meter water resistance, and that's partially due to the uh, shrinking down of the case. Personally for me, it's a welcome change, like many of you, I, I, I don't do much more than, uh, than desk diving. Uh, and even if I were to get into diving, it's unlikely I'd be pushing the barriers of the 200 meter uh, water resistant. Going to accessories, and we'll spend a lot of time looking at this bracelet. Going to accessories though, one of the things that, uh, that happened with this lineup is not only was the uh, overall size of everything shrunk down, but the price itself was shrunk down to a staggering $269 at launch for all of the standard colorways and $369 for a meteorite, re meteorite dial. And the meteorite dial actually had 
a sandwich to it as well. So many firsts here, uh, just an unprecedented price level. This was the cheapest Zelos that's ever been available. That was, uh, I believe, the cheapest meteorite that's ever been available from the brand. That I believe that's the first sandwich dial uh, with a meteorite that's ever been available. So just many things that were going on with this watch that really made it a smash, uh, smash success, and it showed from, uh, from how quickly it sold out. So that gives a, a general uh, overview of most of the model. I had started to touch on the bracelet, and the reason for that being one of the things that came along with that, uh, that cheaper price is there's upgrades all over the place, but you did lose out on the extra strap. So most of the other Zellos, as I'm sure you're aware, typically come with either a Horween leather or a uh, Tropic rubber strap along with it. The stainless steel versions of the Swordfish used to come with a Horween leather strap, so you get the bracelet and you get a Horween leather strap. With this one to save uh, save some cost and keep a lower price point, this one uh, just came with the bracelet, which isn't a bad thing. As we'll see, it's an excellent bracelet and it uh, comes with a number of upgrades that go along with it. So I think it was a worthwhile uh, trade-off. And for, for many, I uh, may have never even really used the bracelet. I know I myself don't use leather uh, products at all. Uh, so mine always just sat in the roll. All right, so now let's go ahead and pull in. And for first comparison, Let's go ahead. This is, of course, a bronze case. This is a swordfish next to this. This is the 42. In, in terms of magnitude and scale, it's kind of hard to appreciate on video. You'll see a little more on wrist. This one certainly isn't a tiny watch by any means. Everything is shrunk down as the dimensions indicate. I've got to say, it does, in some respects, it feels smaller, and in other times, it really doesn't feel that much different at all. So it, it is definitely a noticeable difference in size. And let's go ahead and pull in. I wanted you to see just the teal dial, still very similar, nice sunburst pattern. The colors don't really uh, uh, pop like they do uh, in person on, uh, on video and pictures. That's one thing that many people have commented on. It's extremely hard, especially without filters, to get color realism with this because it's such a versatile dial. It uh, changes color so frequently. It likes to play with the light, gets a real good sunburst pattern. But for, for size perspective, I mainly wanted to look at this next to another stainless steel Zellos here to try to get a little more accurate as far as the scale for this. And you can see the, the dial itself is shrunk down, the hands are shrunk down, everything is just slightly shrunken, but it really does just still look like a swordfish, which is pretty much what you'd expect for a smaller, for a smaller model. Uh, but that being said, when we start looking at the fine details, that's where we notice some differences. So jumping right into those, we had already talked about this is an NH35 swordfish. This is an NH35 swordfish. Notice this one has the date window. This one does not. So that was, for me, a welcome addition. While I do appreciate the pop that you get from this teal dial and having it be un uninterrupted, as we just saw a moment ago, without having a date window cut out, personally, I would rather have the date window on there, so I'm glad for that change. While we're talking about the, the date window, not only is that additional here, but for this, if the camera can pick it up, this uh, this date window is much closer and a better blend than many of the other Zellos that I've seen. Most of the Zello styles that have a date wheel uh, tend to have a lighter and brighter teal color to it. This one tend to go tended to go on the darker side, which I think really with that gradient fume dial, I think blends much nicer into that. And while we're zoomed in here, you can pick up on that there's a gorgeous bevel to that now. So just a really fine touch. Many of them uh, in on the uh, the prior version of the Swordfish, but many of the Zillow's uh, dials in, in general, when you're looking at the date window, it's just a square, uh, square cutout. Adding that bevel, I think, was a really nice and premium touch for this, and it's just one of the little details that makes this pop more. So now I'm transitioning over. Let's take a look. We had already mentioned the bezel, and looking at now we have a traditional pip whereas previously we had a full loom triangle. So in this case, it's an accent color pip, and this will vary for every of, every one of the different colorways with the teal. It is a teal. Some of them are contrasts, like the green, for instance, has a, uh, a red uh, triangle around it. I really like the look during the day. At nighttime, being honest, I do prefer the, uh, the look of the triangle, the full loom triangle. Uh, I think it looks a little more uh, symmetrical with these full lines as opposed to just having as you'll see, just kind of a floating pip, which doesn't really line up with any lines and is inconsistent with the line in numerals that do, uh, do glow. A very, very minor thing, and 
I'm looking at my watch the majority of the time during the day. So of the two, I do prefer this overall. I just wanted to mention that as far as the difference with uh, with the Loom. And again, that's just a preference thing. That's not any, uh, any big deal. I really, really like the look though, especially against this black ceramic bezel insert. And this with both of these is a ceramic bezel insert. This particular one um, happens to have the patina loom, but each of the colorways vary for uh, for that. The handset on this uh, on the teal is a nice polished steel handset. And as you can see, it looks extremely similar to the pattern. So they really stayed true to the uh, swordfish model with the uh, the patterns for uh, for that particularly on the minute hand. And I'm really glad to see that. Not only is it a nice looking and unique piece, but it stays true to um, to what has carried through the Swordfish model. So I think that was nice for uh, for continuity. Now that we've looked at the bezel there, let's go ahead and flip over to the case side. So right off the bat, looking at thickness, dramatic difference. The case itself is dramatically skinnier. The bezel is skinnier. The overall total thickness, of course, is also skinnier. So one of the things with that is you can see here that this has a nice brushed finish on the side. If I can get the camera to pick that up. It's a nice vertical brushing. That did stay the same between these two versions. But one thing, it's going to be really hard to pick up on camera. This one actually has a mirror polish along the top edge, whereas this the camera makes it look sh shinier than it is. This is still just brushed along the top here. So you can kind of make that out. And I apologize, I'm getting too much reflection here with backlighting. But there's more of a chamfered radius all the way around. This is just a sharp edge to the case. This has a chamfered radius all the way around, and that chamfer is polished. Flipping that around, you get the same exact thing on the lower side. This one is much more squared off. Certainly, it's not sharp. It's it is radiused, but this one actually has a full radius and blended chamfer there, and it is polished all, all the way along. So really, in, in my opinion, nice, uh, nice refinement touches, and they're just the subtle things that, especially if you hadn't ever uh, owned one, you probably wouldn't notice or wouldn't jump out at you, but they do really add to uh, the overall refinement. Let's go ahead and flip over and look at the crowns for comparison next. As you can see, neither of these are loomed. They uh, did stay with a very similar pattern. I personally like the look of the, the logo a little more. It is a larger crown on the 42 than it is on the 40. And I, I think the logo scaled up renders just a little bit better than it does shrunken down in. And I'm not sure why, but the decision was made to shrink it down more than was necessary. Here you can see it goes almost completely out to the perimeter with that nice accent circle here, for whatever reason, it is uh, shrunken down more in there. Again, not a big deal, just little uh, little touch differences. Flipping over now to, uh, to the case back. This one is a milled case back. This one is a stamped case back. And you can see how the swordfish itself, very similar overall pattern, but you can see how the swordfish picks up differently there. This one has a little bit sharper, um, sharper edges. This one's a little more radiused for that minor things e either way. Th this partly stemmed from people uh, complained about the sharpness of the logo, uh, especially on the Mako. I never noticed it on, I, I can definitely feel it on the Mako. I never really noticed it on the Swordfish. If I run my finger across it, I can feel that it's sharper. It, I personally prefer the original on the Swordfish the Mako, I'm hopeful that that will be an improvement, but the Swordfish, I've never really found to be sharp. And one thing that I did notice with the Swordfish 40, the edge with the stamping does feel sharper to me. It's not a big deal, but I can feel it on wrist, and ironically, I can actually feel it more on wrist than I ever have with the uh, the Mako V3. Uh, not a big deal. I certainly would not take that into consideration as far as whether to purchase or not to purchase. It's just a little thing to, uh, to note for, uh, for the difference there. All right, now transitioning over to uh, one of the biggest things with this, and I'm going to set this 42 version down and pick up. I have the uh, the standard bracelet, pardon the the scuffs there and depth marks. This is, of course, a used uh, used watch from my uh, my collection. This is one of the most dramatic differences. So first, I'm just going to skip right to the clasp. Let's look at that clasp. It is gorgeous on the new version. 
a huge premium touch for uh, for that. Um, I really like the way they did brushed exterior and a matte interior. I think it will hold up a little better to wear while still adding some uh, some pop. I like the integration. They lost the uh, the logo there, but added the logo there. I think it's a nicer touch. Unfortunately, this one does not have the quick adjust like uh, the Thresher and the new Mako, uh, the new batch of Mako V3s will, but it does go from four micro adjustments up to six micro adjustments. So that is a nice, nice little touch there. This one does not have any of the problems as far as the class blank on my six and a half inch wrist. Uh, you'll see a wrist shot here in a little while. Um, my six and a half inch wrist, this fits up, fits perfectly. So um, no, uh, no issue, S slides over the hand easily, uh, unlike the original, uh, the, this is the upgraded on the V2. Uh, the original one, in case you're not familiar, was significantly shorter and it was hard to get over uh, over the hand onto the wrist. Um, this one didn't have any issues. It, it fit in perfectly. But the bracelet, gotta admire this. And I'm getting fingerprints all over it here. But look at those edges of those uh, those links. It's a very similar style. This one was known, to, this 42 was known to play with the light. This new one, even more so. Look at that reflection. It's just crazy. It has so many chamfered edges to this and all those edges have nice reflectivity all the way around. So you've got there and then now the big change is you've got it in the in the middle um, as well. It's extremely comfortable. It does still taper, um, taper down, just excellent all the way around. So I'm gonna go ahead and set that other bracelet down and focus a little more on this one. Another addition to this, and this is a first for Zelos, is these quick release spring bars. So now all you have to do to release, uh, to remove this is just pinch these in and you can pop right off. Fantastic improvement. That's something, be, the pairing of having quick adjust spring bars and having the quick adjust clasp in there would be pretty much bracelet perfection in my opinion. Zelos has already been doing very well on bracelets and with each one, it's getting incrementally better. So I'm really glad to see, uh, see that come uh, come along also. To uh, make a uh, make note of uh, of another uh, another item with the shrunk down size size to my wrist this uh, this particular uh, one so the forty is coming in at around one hundred and forty seven grams I know someone on the Facebook group was asking about the difference there on if it was a noticeable difference in weight and it certainly is this one's one hundred and forty seven grams size to my wrist six and a half inch wrist on the stainless bracelet the forty two version size to my wrist is coming in at around 184 grams, so 37 gram difference. Not uh, not staggering, but it is definitely a noticeable difference on, uh, on the wrist. So let's go ahead, since we're talking all this wrist piece here, let's go and look at see what it looks like. Personally, I think it looks really nice. It fits, uh, fits cleanly. It's definitely not a small watch as far as the presence, but it has plenty of room in there. I think it's still a versatile size. If you have very large wrist, I think the 42 fits great. The original fits great as well. And we'll go ahead and pop up, pop that one on quickly and take a, take a look at that for, uh, for comparison. You can see that still short lug to lug allows it to fit on the wrist nicely, even with smaller size wrists. I'm torn. I, I really don't know which I prefer between the two. This one, I appreciate the chunky look for what it is, especially in, uh, in bronze, but I think it looks good in stainless steel as well. But this newer one here, especially if you're looking at something compared to like a Mako or something like that in other 40 millimeter size, or if you have real small wrist, I, I think this is a great, uh, great option as well. Addressing um, some quality control uh, things, I know there's a couple people on the Facebook group who had some minor, uh, minor issues and some not so minor. Um, there was a, a couple ding, ding cases that, that happened. Um, you know, I, I just want to address it in case anyone is is concerned. A few things to to note. Um, while certainly at this price point, I don't think you can per expect perfection. A ding like that, yeah, that that is unacceptable. That being said, that kind of stuff happens, and Elshon immediately, as soon as he saw that, uh, addressed it and is replacing those for uh, for the individual. So um, note that um, Elshon uh, Elshon Tang does very much stand behind the brand. My personal one, just to, just to um, point out a, a couple things with it. You can see there, there's a little scuff there um, on uh, on the brushing that uh, that did come out of the box. Not a big deal, um, but I did want to uh, did want to let you know uh, about it. Same thing with uh, with the clasp. I don't know if I can even get it to pick up. Yeah, right right there. You can see same deal. After I peeled off the, the stickers, that had that. 
and both of those could be from the, the biggest thing for uh, for me that is a functional difference. And I, I know Elshon's going to get this uh, taken care of, so it's not a big deal. But my quick release spring bar, one of the heads actually popped off of that in shipping. And unfortunately, um, that is uh, that that particular one, I don't think that was supposed to be removable. I had tried going and uh, securing that back in uh, after talking to Elshon. Um, and as you, as you can see here, uh, it, it clearly has uh, has become lost. I'm not sure when it uh, when it came out, um, but I uh, did let him know about that. And again, I have no doubt he'll uh, he'll get that taken care of. That kind of stuff happens. Um, it uh, in that particular instance, uh, I think it was just damaged during uh, during shipping uh, for it probably bouncing around inside of uh, the watch roll. And if you are interested in what these come with, it does still even at this low price point come with all of the signature uh, Zellos items. So you still get uh, the acacia wood box, the slip cover that you'll see in all the other videos. I'm not going to spend time on uh, on that here, uh, but feel free to uh, check out the others for a more uh, more complete review. So those those are the main highlights uh, for the differences that I could detect between these particular models. Next, go let's go ahead and take a look at the loom. So looking at the forged carbon here in the uh, 42 millimeter version on the left, and the uh, new uh, SF40 here on the right. You can see the overall pattern is very similar as far as having the uh, C3 accents for all the markers in uh, hands with the exception of the second hand with BGW9. You have the perimeter that is a BGW9 uh, loom ring and then you have the full uh, full bezel. So even though it's the patina versus the C3, it still looks extremely similar uh, for overall appearance. The main thing to note as far as the difference between these, again, is that uh, pip as opposed to having the full, uh, full light up triangle. All right, so there you have it. This has been the new uh, Swordfish 40. Again, there are going to be new ones of these that are coming available. I hope this information has been helpful for you and for anyone who currently has a uh, 42 millimeter Swordfish and has been wondering, is it worth the upgrade? My personal opinion, while I do think it's excellent incremental improvements, unless you want a smaller one, certainly I think this is worthy of the collection. If you have a smaller wrist, absolutely must get. If you're looking for your first Swordfish, I would uh, think you would be satisfied with, with either of these. They're both excellent. There are definitely a number of little improvements with this one. Really, at the end of the day, though, I, I think you would be happy with either model. They're both fantastic. I do like the little touches. If you need a date window and you don't want to spend the big bucks on the Etta, uh, certainly this is, a, this is a great option there. Um, so o overall, I, I think the... The things that are pointed out in this video as far as differences should really help to inform your, uh, your decision. Thank you for watching.